So why would I want a solar panel mounted onto my fifth wheel permanently? Well, this is a 60 watt solar panel. 60 watts at 12 volts equals five amps. At maximum output, five, five amps, and say we had 10, a 10 hours of sunshine, that's 50 amp hours of energy we could create. Now, since my solar panel isn't aimed directly at the sun, I'm certainly not gonna get maximum output. So maybe I'll get just um, say 60% output. That would be three amps. At 10 hours of sunshine would be 30 amp hours. Now, if we even had more sun, you know, there's more energy. So I could have theoretically between say 25 to 60 amp hours of energy depending on the, how much sunshine is shining and so forth. Here's my battery. It's probably about a 100 amp hour battery. And I've actually got two. That's a 100 amp hour battery in there, but they aren't they aren't at their peak, you know, they're old batteries. So if we just assume that I have 100 amp hours of energy, meaning I could flow one amp for 100 hours or 100 amps for one hour or 50 amps for two hours, etc. So if all I was using was water and maybe the lighting um, in the summertime and I didn't need to run the furnace, you could probably... Um, You'd probably use maybe 20 amp hours of energy. And if we were producing 30 from our solar panel, you could in theory stay out for weeks. When you were using the heater at night and pulling maybe 50 amp hours, and that means theoretically your battery would die within two days. Um, if we added this 30 amp hours per day from this panel, um, you could in theory stay out for five days instead of two. Here's the roof of my camper. Went ahead and drilled a hole. You can see in here, this is actually like three quarter inch OSB board. Uh, so you can actually walk on the top of my camper. So this is inside my camper and the wire goes right out of the roof right in here. I pulled this panel off. Here's my wire where I'm going I'm to pull that wire up. But I was fortunate enough that I can go straight down. I drilled a hole down there. You can see my wire is already pulled out here. And it's going to be pretty close to where I need it to come out in the battery compartment. I have a CGB here. CGB stands for, I think it's crushing, grommet, and bushing. So you have this grommet, you pull the wire through here, put, put the grommet in there, you put this cap in and it squishes the grommet around it, pretty much makes a watertight uh, seal. Um, this is a, this end is a half inch thread which actually requires a three quarter inch hole that I drilled in here. It's really tight. I'm going to put some silicone and then screw it in there. So this three quarter inch hole is just perfect for this. It may not be proper to just screw it into the wood, but it's pretty, pretty darn tight. So I think it'll be all right after I caulk it. I think it was pretty much watertight when I screwed it in there, but there's no reason not to put silicone around it. I have a lot of this. This is like household caulk for windows and doors and stuff. Bailing wire I'm using for a fish tape. Okay, so I've pulled my wire through the top here. And then I'm feeding on the grommet. If you want, if it's too tight, you can use some, just like water works pretty well to help it get on there. Then we need this little ring. And then the cap. And then as you tighten this down, it gives it a nice perfect seal. Not only will it keep it from moving and pulling out, or but it's uh, waterproof too. 
I was able to come down my wall straight down from my solar panel and it came comes through here I'll silicone this up so here's my wire then I mounted my solar charger right here you can't charge a battery with a solar panel without a voltage regulator or solar controller because a solar panel will put out say 18 to 20 volts on a 12 volt panel and if you hooked it directly up to the battery sure it would charge it up but then it would overcharge it and eventually destroy your battery so you have to have this regulator it's pretty easy I just have to land my solar panel here positive negative battery positive and negative and the wire I'm using is a 14 gauge should be good since I have a 60 watt solar panel that's only 6 amps so it should be okay with this 14 gauge and uh, this is actually the same gauge you could use like an extension cord an outdoor type extension cord is usually 14 gauge wire the distance from the top of my solar panel down to here is about 14 feet or 12 feet and then this wire to my battery is about two feet um, if you have a choice you need to keep this battery between the controller and the battery as short as possible this battery can the the wire going to the solar panel can be a little longer because that voltage is 20 volts and you're gonna lose less uh, current if you make that one longer than you would from here because this one will only go up to 14 point something to charge the battery so um, you don't want great distances on on these wires it, it'll just reduce the amount of uh, power so I was looking for a flat spot on my roof originally I wanted to go this way but there's a gentle slope on my roof so this way really wasn't very flat so it's gonna go this way I just stripped a 2x4 so termination is pretty easy I've got a wiring diagram on the back this is a solar X panel and I want 12 volt positive and negative so hook in positive and negative here's another CGB should be rain tight at least and then cover all right so I used a counter seek drill bit to uh, drill some little pre-drill some holes now I'm going to be very generous with the caulk Screws are just barely the right size. One thing to remember when mounting your solar panel, don't even like this much shade, or if something just sticks up. If you cover just 10% of your panel, you can reduce the output by about 40 or 50%. So you really don't want anything to be shading it at all. 